The GR86, as we know it, is a modern-day interpretation of this guy. A three-door hatchback, rear-wheel drive Corolla. This was the true AE86, as we know it, and uh, the Torino. And, in fact, Toyota gave the GR86 a Torino special edition this past year. What if I told you that they could be going back to something like this for the next generation GR86, except adding two more doors on each side. What's going on? Is it April Fools already? Let's get into it. If you enjoy the channel and the content, make sure to uh, stop by my server over on Discord. It's open to anyone who just wants to tag along on it and uh, discuss, you guys can discuss things that sometimes I'm not able to address on the channel for various different reasons, like spy shots that I don't have access to that I accidentally just showed there a second ago, which I can't really talk about since it's copyrighted. So anyways, let's get into these uh, screenshots and these are taken by Best Car. We know Best Car to be the most reliable source of upcoming cars from Japan. Um, Scoop Magazine and Scoop website, they pretty much nailed the GR Corolla and they like 99% nailed the Prius and was actually really close to with uh, the, the J250 Land Cruiser. And check out the cover here, ladies and gentlemen. We have what they're calling the new GR86. And this is hard for me to believe. Toyota, maybe they don't want too many coupes. If you missed my video recently on the MR2, they would have three all at the same time. And maybe they'd be taking a bite out of each other, kind of cannibalizing each other's sales. You have the Supra, uh, then you're going to have the MR2. Um, we already have the GR Corolla, which is great. And in some ways, this could replace the GR Corolla. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, but the GR86 is also a coupe. And yeah, so you just have a wealth of coupes, which is awesome in the Toyota lineup. With an MR2 coming as well, do they really need the GR86? I mean, I guess it would come in at the entry level price point. But yeah, it's just kind of muddying the water. It's good to have options. And it's great to have options for performance cars, especially as we're on the dawn of a new age of propulsion in cars with electrification. And this, my friends, could be electrified in some shape or form as well. All right. So let's get into the images here. Um, and we'll talk about the, the design of the car. And I think, well they're not going to be 100% accurate because they're floating between two different designs. And they're saying it is going to be a four-door. But again, take it with a grain of salt. Apparently, Toyota was playing with this back with the first generation 8.6, and they had a shooting brake. So they could be returning to a shooting brake, which is pretty much a hot wagon, hot hatch, but it's more elongated. Um, Man, there's so much. I'm actually really excited about this. I want it to be this design. This is cool too. And I'd be happy if this came. This is more of like a Kia Stinger. And speaking of Kia Stinger, we know the Kia Stinger's platform was shared with the Genesis G70, which is a rear wheel drive compact sedan sort of platform, but it can be scaled up, right? We, we see, I think that platform is probably shared with the G80 and G90 in some ways too. Uh, so why did I bring that up? Kia Stinger's discontinued now, rest in peace. And there is a big market for a performance hatchback sort of vehicle uh, for the masses. Now, what's also interesting, as I mentioned, Genesis, a competitor to the Genesis G70 is not the Kia Stinger. That's just a stable mate and an un like a, a lower scale brethren, right? But a competitor to the G70 is the Lexus IS. And they're saying this car, this vehicle that you see in front of your eyes is going to share with the Lexus IS, which is competitor to the G70. And if that's the case, we're talking rear wheel, rear wheel drive, front engine, just like the IS500, for example. Is this going to be packing a 5-liter V8? The answer is absolutely not. That's going to stay with the Lexus lineup. That 5-liter V8 has never touched a Toyota product. You could say there's a, a hybrid derivative of that 5-liter V8 in the 
um, the Century sedan, but the Century sedan, well, it's kind of getting replaced by the Century SUV, but I don't know. That's totally off topic. But anyways, no, no five liter V8s going into a, a modern Toyota, right? V8s are going out the window. So what they're saying right here is that it's going to be a hybrid. Now, some of you are like, no, no CVT. I don't want any droniness. It's a performance car. Well, here's the good news. There is no eCVT slated for this. Toyota knows how to make performance cars and they wouldn't do that to us. So what they're saying here is that they're going to take the beloved G, was it the G16E engine that we have in the GR Corolla that's supposed to be in the MR2. They're taking that and they're giving it the iForce Max treatment. So they're going to be putting maybe a 50 horsepower electric motor with nearly 200 pound feet of torque. They're slotting that electric motor between the inline three cylinder, the 1.6 liter G16E engine. And they're slotting that electric motor between the transmission and the engine, just like we see on the Land Cruiser, upcoming Land Cruiser, for example, like the Tacoma TRD Pro right? Uh, which no one's driven that hybrid powertrain yet. We've only been able to drive the full iForce Max, which is a twin turbo V6 hybrid that we see in the Sequoia, for example. And here's a big benefit to this. We know that Toyota can put real transmissions with this sort of hybrid setup and they would they could do what they wanted to it, but they have a newly developed eight speed auto. I don't know if that can be uh, a, a fit fitted to a vehicle like this, which is rear wheel drive bias. I would assume that it's the eight speed auto that is not the DAT. I think is a direct automatic transmission. They just developed for the GR Yaris and GR Corolla. That's not going to be in here. I'm almost positive. It will be, um, the Aishin eight speed that we see on the new trucks hybrid and the new hybrid trucks like the Land Cruiser and the iForce Max Tacoma. So I think it'll be an eight-speed automatic, but there's also a possibility, right? This where, where it feels like it's an April Fool's joke that this vehicle could be a manual transmission hybrid. We know it can be done. I mean, Honda did it with the CRZ. That vehicle was a flop, unfortunately. It looked cool, but it was a flop. It was kind of slow and it wasn't that fuel efficient either. We could have a six speed manual hybrid with 350 horsepower, right? 350 PS because that, that electric motor, let's say they just copy and paste that electric motor, um, from the Tacoma hybrid assembly essentially and slot it into this vehicle. That would be incredible. Now, could they come out with all wheel drive here? Yes. I don't think Toyota will though. I think they want to keep it simple, keep costs down, but maybe they do. Maybe they do come out with all wheel drive and it would be mechanical all wheel drive. The problem is, is that, yeah, the IS already has all wheel drive, but the IS is all wheel drive system is like antiquated in some ways. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just, it's kind of bulky. And like, if you're in an all wheel drive IS, your leg space is, is removed for the driver and passenger. If I remember right, because of the bulkiness of that all wheel drive setup underneath the floor of the vehicle. So we could get a reveal in 2025 next year for this um, four door, five door vehicle, this GR86. And they're saying to come out in 2026 to 2027. Um, and that, I mean, it's possible. I don't want to get my hopes up for something this jaw droppingly impressive. This is like a shooting break. This is something that I don't know if Toyota's ever done. Um, yes, they kind of have like the sports wagon of the Corolla in other markets that I, I wish we had here. The, the touring, the touring sports, I think is what it's called. This would be on just an entire different level of performance, rear wheel drive power, lots of torque. Like they say 350 PS, um, how much torque here? I'm just going to run some numbers real quick. So it has 273 pound feet of torque. And I want to say that electric motor, like 180 pound feet of torque, we would be having 453 pound feet of torque going to the rear wheels here. That would be outstanding. Now with this, something like this, since it is sharing with the IS platform, is this going to step on the IS's toes? 
And the answer is probably. I mean, the IS, I just made a video on the Lexus IS and what's likely to go forward with that. There's going to be an HZ, which is supposed to be the fully battery electric production version of the LFZC concept. Um, Lexus was hoping that would be the IS, but it looks like they're going to branch those two compact vehicles that are about the same size, keep the IS internal combustion, maybe a hybrid, maybe the IS could use this powertrain. And I think it would make sense for Lexus to use this powertrain in more than just one product, right? So maybe that's why they're trying to make the most out of out of the research and development for that sort of setup. With the inline three turbo hybrid manual, and I just don't think we would see a manual on the Lexus end, but we would see one on this Gazoo Racing end. So um, in terms of size, yes, it's noticeably bigger, longer wheelbase. Um, they say the overhangs are a little bit bigger here compared to the current GR86, of course. It's just a bigger vehicle overall. Um, it'll weigh more too. It's just on a different, it's a completely different car. That's why I feel like this is an April Fools. Even though these rumors have been circulating apparently for years over in Japan, them playing with the idea of a shooting brake 8.6 model. If I hear anything more from Japan uh, about this vehicle, this lift back or shooting brake, they don't know what it's gonna be, but apparently it's gonna have four doors, potentially five doors, right? Since it's a lift back. This would fill the niche, niche however you want to say it, niche or niche of um, the rest in peace Kia Stinger. This would elevate, in theory, the presence of the IS. And maybe this is, uh, even though we'll make sure this same platform as I I IS, maybe it's actually a new platform for the IS. One last platform, potentially, uh, as a rear wheel drive platform before it's all electrified at some point in time. But man, this would be a dream car for me. I'm not going to lie. Like this would be, it would get 30 miles a gallon. It would get, it'll do zero to 60. My guess would be in five seconds, maybe faster. Um, it would be fun to drive. It would be practical. You know, one of my favorite vehicles that I drove recently, just because it kind of ticks every box, t ticks looks, performance, and practicality, it was a Volvo Polestar Tune plug-in hybrid. Now, this wouldn't have quite as much power. That has 450 horsepower. So if I remember right, this would have 350 horsepower, but this would be lighter since the battery pack would be much, much, much smaller. You'd have a very small battery pack in here to power the, the small electric motor. Um, so anyways, guys, I, you know, this is too good to be true for me. I, I want, I want this car to happen. I don't want to get my hopes up because I don't want to be let down. These renders are incredible. The idea of a GR86 becoming a four door. I don't want them to call it the eight, six, just discontinue the eight, six and call this something else. The GR nine, six. I don't know. It would sell better than the eight, six. There's no doubt it would cost more. It's on a different performance level, but you have practicality here, guys. You can bring the family, you can bring friends, you can put a crap ton of groceries in here. And I mean, you could probably take something like this to the track as well, fold down the seats. I mean, sky's the limit with something like this, a hybrid performance lift back. I'm going to end it there. I want this to be true so bad, but... I feel like it's just an April Fool's joke coming a little bit early. Don't don't take this one to the bank. Sprinkle it with some Salt Bay, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. If you appreciated this fun discussion today, make sure to smash the like button. Make sure you're subscribed, like I said, because if I catch a whiff of this, this is one of the more exciting prospects coming out of Japan in a while for me. Anyways, my appetite is wet. <laughs> I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Peace.